I think there are two reasons why people confuse about the Ristocetin based test. One reason is that that people sometimes think that Ristocetin based test is one test. Actually, in reality, it's not. There are two kind of tests usually done with Ristocetin. One is Ristocetin cofactor assay test or VW activity test is also called. And another test is Ristocetin induced platelet aggregation, RIPA, RIPA. So before I go into the details or dive into the details, I would like to tell a few basic things about uh, the Ristocetin. Uh, Ristocetin is uh, introduced in 1950s, particularly 1955, immediately after vancomycin as a blockbuster antibody. It was quite overhyped and uh, perceived to be the next big antibiotic. But what happened that soon people found that it is causing platelet clumping and thrombocytopenia, decreased platelet count in the patient's body. So it was withdrawn from the market within few years. But later they found this, that this failed antibiotic, which was uh, failed uh, as an antibiotic, Ristocetin, could be utilized in a different purpose. So what is its role? So normally we know that what happens, let's say this uh, spoon is a vulnerable factor and this my hand is a blood vessel wall which has been injured and this 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 subendothelial collagen has been exposed let's say this is subendothelial collagen so normally what happens this von Willebrand factor comes and attaches with this subendothelial collagen and then what happens let's say my this hand is a platelet this platelet's one factor receptor glycoprotein receptor glycoprotein receptor 1b or 1b95 complex they would come and attach with this von Willebrand factor that is normally happens and this step in the primary hemostasis uh, is called platelet adhesion. So in the platelet adhesion, two things play an important role. One is this uh, one, this one one factor, the spoon, and another thing is this glycoprotein one B receptor, which is attaching with this one one factor. Now, normally, what is happening inside the human body? It requires uh, is, uh, inside the blood vessel. It requires a searing force. As the blood is moving, there is a searing force. A physical force is there which is helping the conformation and change in the von Willebrand factor to bind with this glycoprotein 1B receptor. But what happens that outside the human body, if I want to do the same thing, we want to test this uh, von Willebrand factor's activity, we need something special. And that's some magic thing was, that magic thing was von Willebrand factor. Uh, sorry, Ristocetin. What Ristocetin can do, Ristocetin even actually without the absence of this searing force in the within the blood vessel, they can help to aggregate this platelets, platelets glycoprotein 1B receptor with this uh, von Willebrand factor. So they help in the, uh, they help in the interaction between a von Willebrand factor and the uh, platelets glycoprotein 1B receptor. That can be done outside the human body with the help of Ristocetin. So Ristocetin basically can replace the role of the searing force inside the blood vessel. And we can do that test even inside, outside, uh, in a lab, in a, within a test tube. We can check that our my von Willebrand factors are functionally effective to react with glycoprotein 1B. That can be done by Ristocetin. So, the, usually the common test which is done with the Ristocetin is called Ristocetin cofactor assay, cofactor test, uh, Ristocetin cofactor assay, or is also called von Willebrand factor activity nowadays. This test basically is doing what? They are checking that uh, with the help of Ristocetin, they are checking that are my von Willebrand factors interacting with or my von Willebrand factor is interacting with my glycoprotein 1B. So when this would be decreased or when it would be abnormal? Well, once it is possible when my von Willebrand factors are not there or uh, they are defective, it would be in uh, von Willebrand disease or another disease is possible when my glycoprotein 1B receptor or my platelet that is called barnard sulius syndrome. That would be again defective. So this test, the Ristocetin cofactor assay would be decreased in two conditions. Both the condition it can be defective or decreased wherever there is a defect in the platelet adhesion. And what are the two factors which play a role in platelet adhesion? One is von Willebrand factor, another is my platelets, glycoprotein 1B receptor. The defect in von Willebrand factor is called von Willebrand disease, and the defect in uh, expression of the glycoprotein 1B receptor that is called Barnard Solier syndrome. B B R N A R D Barnard S O U L I E R syndrome. Glangeman thrombasthenia is not going to cause any change. Uh, it would be normal in case of Glangeman thrombasthenia, the Ristocetin based test, because Glangeman thrombasthenia is a problem of glycoprotein 2B3A, and that is taking a role in the platelet aggregation, not in platelet adhesion. So, another last thing I want to tell you that you need to remember that there is another test there 
is not restrocytin cofactor acid, it is restrocytin induced platelet aggregation repa test. That test is particularly useful for identifying a particular subtype of von Willebrand disease, and that is von Willebrand disease type 2b. And in that case, the restrocyte, this repa, they are actually this, there is increased activity. There is an increased, this repa test will be increased actually, or it would be, uh, I would say that. In type 2b what is going to happen that even with low dose of restrocytin they are going to interact with that but i have discussed this in a separate session because uh, until unless you are very clear about the four or subtypes of the type 2 von Willebrand disease type 2a 2b m and n you will not be able to understand but please remember that in type 2b von Willebrand disease actually the ripa is increased restrocytin induced platelet regression is increased but in Conventional or classic type of von Willebrand disease, the RIPA is decreased. Why it is increased in type 2b? Because what happens in type 2 von Willebrand disease, there is an increased interaction between glycoprotein 1b and platelet This is a quite unique type, and that's why RIPA is increased. So, if I make a quick summary, what we learned in this session that von Willebrand in the platelet adhesion, there are two important factors are there. One is von Willebrand factor. Von Willebrand factor is released from two sources. Either it could be released from the megakaryocytes, subsequently from the platelets, alpha granules, or from the endothelial cells, viable palliative bodies. And this von Willebrand factor actually acts as a glue. So whenever my blood vessel lining is injured, uh, my subendothelial collagen, beneath the endothelial collagen layer is exposed, this von Willebrand factor would come and attach to that. And my platelet can also come and now attach to this von Willebrand factor. This is the first step in the primary hemostasis platelet adhesion. So these tests are basically checked by restrocytin based test. If there is a problem in either in my von Willebrand factor or in my glycoprotein 1b receptor, that is Barnard Solius syndrome, then my restrocytin based test would be decreased or defective. Because what Ristocetin does, Ristocetin just help in increase interaction between von Willebrand factor and my glycoprotein 1B receptor of my platelet. They are doing just that. And they can do it even outside the human body. They can replace the role of searing force inside that. So the point you need to remember that Ristocetin cofactor assay would be decreased in both von Willebrand disease, classic von Willebrand disease, classic means the type 1, most common 75 to 80% and also in Barnard Solius syndrome. How can even we differentiate them? If we add some normal plasma in that, what is going to happen? If the normal plasma corrects the restrocytin based test, then it means it's a von Willebrand disease. Why? Because normal plasma would contain von Willebrand factor. But if it is not corrected, then it is Barnard Solius syndrome. Why? Because Barnard Solius syndrome is a receptor expressed over the platelet. So if I add a normal patient's plasma into the test, that is never going to correct that because normal plasma does not contain receptor separately. Receptor would only be present in the platelet surface. So adding normal patient's plasma, even you can separate then restrocytin based test would be abnormal both in Barnard Solius syndrome and the classic or the conventional von Willebrand disease, the type one or von Willebrand disease in general, even if you want to know the basics. And then by adding plasma correction, you can even separate them. If after adding normal plasma, it is corrected, it is von Willebrand disease. If it is not corrected, then it is Barnard Solius syndrome. Another point I told you, REPA test is particularly useful for a particular type of von Willebrand disease, that is type 2b. And usually, classic type, the REPA would be decreased. REPA is a special test actually, not the, the most common test which is done with the restrocytin. Most common test is restrocytin cofactor assay, which is usually done first. But RIPA is a special test which can even help to particular identify type 2b. And in type 2b von Willebrand disease, RIPA is actually increased, which is quite odd because normally restrocytin reduced aggregation is decreased in the in the von Willebrand disease. But in that case, this is increased. Please keep in mind. So, what are the three key takeaway points? Restrocytin based test, restrocytin cofactor assay would be typically decreased in the von Willebrand disease, and also in the classic von Willebrand disease, and also in the Barnard Solius syndrome. And another specific test is done RIPA. That RIPA is particularly useful for identifying type 2B von Willebrand disease where the RIPA would be increased. So these are the points you can keep in mind for this. Thank you so much.